negative consequence. So isn't, isn't part of the, the, the review of the conditions and standards going forward about focusing on those twin imperatives, not just CO2, you know, very much about air quality as well. That makes it very challenging technically, I know, but is that not part of the, the, the past story and the future story? Very much so. I, uh, I'm glad you recognise that right away. One of the things we say is we need to learn from what happened yeah? Yeah. and make sure we take those learnings on board when we come up with now new solutions for the future. Yes. And one of that is clear that so far, you know, air quality, climate change were looked at as separate pillars. Yeah. And now when we look for solutions, also technology solutions, we need to look at this coherently. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. Thank you. Yeah. Second, Second, what we also learned from the past, that is that, uh, you know, we don't want uh, that the diesel story gets repeated, you know, in a decade from now, uh, because we were forced into diesel by policymakers because of climate change and the CO2 reduction potential. We don't want to get in a situation that 10 yeah. years from now, the same groups who are criticizing diesel now tell us, go away from electric, because mm. now we see that the way electricity is produced is not clean, and the way you dispose of batteries is not clean. Yeah. So go away with electric. So we just want to make sure we, that this is well thought through before they push in certain directions. Okay. And that's why we are not so much in favor of this you know, one technology only approach. Yes, it's going to be an important one. You see yeah. there's a lot happening in that sphere, but we need to leave the options open. It's the end result which can't let the flexibility to manufacturers to decide how to get there. Okay, yeah, thank you. It's, it's